What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? Today's a Sunday, and it's a lazy Sunday for me. I just put in 60-plus hours this week uh, by Friday, and I'm ready for a break, especially I worked another 12-hour shift yesterday on Saturday. Anyways, what we're going to be tackling today is we're going to look at a welding rod that a viewer had requested that I look at, and we're going to see how it runs and if I can do some kind of justice to this. So with that said, let's get into it. Today's unofficial sponsor is Bundaberg Ginger Beer. I love this stuff. Although it's getting harder to find. Some places have it, some places don't. So anyways, I have a box of welding rods in here that a viewer requested. And long story short, these are by a company called Crown Alloys. And I have used stuff from that company before TIG Filler Wire. And he has a bunch of these, I guess. It's what he's working with. And he wants to know if I can do a better job than him. Now, I didn't see any pictures of the welds he was putting down with this stuff to know for sure if it's him or the welder. Because I'll tell you what, stick welding, if you're not like reasonably skilled, it can humble anyone who's just trying to pick it up in a hurry. But what these are is uh, the Royal 200. It's an eighth inch rod. And I guess, like I said, he had a bunch of this and was having pretty poor results. Now, a little bit of words of wisdom regarding rods like this. So this company, Crown Alloys, makes rods that they call something other than like 6010, 6013, 7018. These are what are known as unclassified rods. All that really means is that they don't pay the American Welding Society money to call their rod a 6013 or whatever it is. Does that mean that these are not good, aka bad rods? No. But what I don't like about unclassified rods is the results that you're going to get from them are unpredictable. And what I mean by that is I'll put a spec sheet up for like a 6013 rod and you're going to see that the info on it, like it has a minimum spec and they have test results and it's like so well documented as to what you're getting, all of the alloying elements in it. When you get into stuff like this, they just tell you it's probably around this. Like the specifications aren't the same and rarely have I found any particular rod that's an unclassified rod to be better performing than a known rod. AK with stick welding, there's no way, even though this is specced at a higher tensile strength than 7018, I'd almost bet the farm that it probably does not perform as good as 7018, meaning it doesn't weld out of position as good, it's not as strong in like conventional testing like I'm gonna do on this. So I opened up the package and I wasn't expecting this Here's, at first I thought they were red, but I guess this would be a shade of purple, which would make sense since their logo is purple. The amount of flux that's on this rod, to me, would suggest it's closer to a 6010 or a 60, probably a 6011. Which makes sense because 6011 can run on a lot of different polarities, amperages, etc. and a lot of machines. So I don't know that this is going to be a 6013 clone. It's probably going to run closer to 6011. Uh, it's hard to say, though. I mean, that's the point in doing testing. But just initial appearance is a little bit odd with this, not what I was expecting. I expected this to basically be a 6013 clone. All right, well, let's get some steel and weld with it. So I ran three test welds with this rod. The first one was at about 90 amps. The second one was at about 110, and this guy was at about 125. And I can tell you that this definitely needs more than 90 amps. One of the problems with these rods is that while the packaging it came with didn't give an amperage spec, and maybe I could have looked it up online, but I got no cell service where I'm at. So I was kind of out of luck. And 
Based on the rod, I figured it might actually run at 90 amps, thinking it was going to run more like a 6011, and the truth is this doesn't really run like a 6011. It smells kind of like one, but this uh, is very close, I would say, to a 7014 rod. At 110 amps, the results are acceptable. However, I will say this, for an eighth inch rod, this thing likes to deposit a very small, narrow weld. I tried to slow down a little bit off camera for some other little like one inch test welds and it just humps up even at higher amperage. So it almost welds like it's DC negative where it produces a narrow bead. But for all practical purposes, I would say 110 amps is in the ballpark of where you should be. Keep in mind this is quarter inch plate. Now this here, which I ran at like 125, has some weird weld defects. So I see what's appears to be porosity in there, like here, a little bit there. It, it's hard to say what was going on. I started the arc and the flux was kind of just mixing in with the puddle. There wasn't like a distinguished puddle. It didn't seem to like the higher amperage on this particular plate that much. So I would definitely say on quarter inch, you're down at about 110 amps to get some kind of result out of this. Now, like I said, the closest welding rod to this is a 7014. The molten puddle looks very similar. I will say that it's probably a little bit harder to see the molten puddle, and the flux seems to be a lot thicker on this. Now, it does get slag peels just like 7014, uh, so it's definitely not a 6011, 6010 clone. 7014 is really what this mostly compares to. So I ran a little short bead on this 3 8 plate because this is all the scrap that I had laying around and did a cut and etch to kind of get an idea of what the penetration is. And let's take a look at that. So based on this simple test, the penetration of this rod is pretty bad. 7014 is about what this would look like, so it's in the ballpark of that. But pretty much every other welding rod that you could imagine, even 6013, I think, might have a little bit more penetration than this. Which realistically might be a good thing if you wanted to weld really thin sheet metal with this rod in the 1.6 mil or 1 16th diameter rods. Those might actually work pretty good on sheet metal. But on anything thicker, uh, I would watch out. You're probably going to have no root penetration with this rod. So after doing that, I tried to weld up this 3 8 fillet weld at 115 amps. And about two-thirds of it is really good and clean. And there's kind of what appears to be porosity or maybe a slag inclusion right in here. And the problem with a lot of these rods, like the 6013, 7014, and rods that run similar, is when you start, especially on thicker plate on a fillet weld, that flux wants to run in front of your rod, and now you're welding through excessive flux, and more or less, like the arc wanders, and you get this slag entrapment or porosity here. Once uh, the arc stabilized, everything went really good, but this rod is, like I said, just like 6013, 7014, and doing fillet welds like this is going to be tough to do them defect-free. Your arc gap control, your amperage, everything has got to be spot on. Versus 7018, which is what I pretty much exclusively run, uh, I would never see a defect like that. It just doesn't happen, so that's kind of unique to this type of rod. So with that said, let's go to the shop press and break this. Now, do I think that that welding defect is going to cause an issue and force a failure of this? It could contribute. However, um, honestly, I don't think this particular rod will handle a full bend with 3 8 plate. Very much like 7014 does not do too well in this. And some of that is due to the limited ductility, I believe, of the weld deposit. Long story short, that weld, like I can just tell by scratching my nail on it, it appears to be pretty hard. And when you try and bend this plate on that, a lot of force is at that toe line. And when the weld doesn't stretch much and it's hard, uh, it tends to cause the plate to break rather than allowing it to fully bend. So this is generally a case of, well, just because it says 80,000 PSI doesn't mean it's better. On mild steel 7018 or ER70 MIG wire will do a lot better job on a bend test like this simply because they stretch a little bit more and it allows the plate to bend and not just tear off. So 
Well, we won't know unless we test it. So let me set it on there and put some pressure on it and see if it bends. And as I suspected, it would fail. All right, let's go to the welding bench. So as I suspected, we have a failure on our hands. This did not survive much of a bend test, and we'll get into possible reasons as to why in a minute. Now, I have the top plate of a fillet weld brake test I did on 7014, and that weld more or less uh, tore right off of the plate. And what I think happened with 7014 rods is the weld deposit is harder than the base steel, and as it bent, more or less the weld didn't stretch any, so all that force was concentrated right at the toe line. With this particular rod, it has a failure method that I've never seen before. And I've broke test, same plate size, same everything, same material with at least, I don't know, five different welding processes for over 100 brake tests. And I have never seen one that failed directly through the middle of the weld. If you look here, 100% of the weld is still stuck to the plate and to the base material. And the weld itself failed, not the base material. So like I said, even with this guy, which was 7014, the base material technically failed but the stiffness of that weld probably played a role. This is unusual. Maybe the only other weld I've ever seen break like this was a hard face rod that was not designed to join two pieces, and it was overly hard, and more or less, I barely put any pressure on that particular weld, and it broke just like this. Now, I know you're wondering, well, is that porosity that's in this weld or that defect what caused this and I don't believe it is and let's take a look up close so when I look at this weld here I can tell that this is all a hundred percent clean metal there isn't any like internal weld porosity that I can see and this little divot which I thought was porosity or slag inclusion really isn't either one of them it could have been a slag inclusion and that stuff popped out but it's more or less just a divot uh, where the weld metal didn't wet out. Um, where it broke, I don't see much of any evidence that there was porosity or defects any deeper. And looking at the bottom plate, I don't see any defects in the weld material. I do see that there's flux stuck underneath here, which is very typical with 7014 and 6013 that you would get flux entrapment underneath the weld. And let me take a look at this. Yeah, I would say there was a little bit of a lack of fusion in that root uh, with this. It didn't penetrate very far. And if you look here, the whole original plate edge is more or less intact. So I think what we have here is the weld more or less kind of bridged from this to this and left that slag underneath here. Looking at this, the only other rod, like I said, that failed like this was a hard face rod. I didn't want to sell that short earlier, so I did uh, another weld that is completely defect free. And I got to say that first half inch of this welding rod is really tough. The puddle kind of just wants to get ahead of the rod and mixes around. I don't like that at all. And it tends to have a lot of spatter, all things considered. But I'll put a picture of this up right now. There are no defects on it. So let's bend this and break it and see what happens. My guess is it's going to break just like the last one. Uh, I don't see this bending anywhere near what like a 7018 or ER70 MIG would. All right, well, let's break this.
Yep, that's what I figured. Here's the results of that, and you can see how clean that weld is, and internally there's no defects like porosity or anything, and it broke right through the weld material like the weld material isn't as strong as the base steel. Interesting. So in conclusion, what do I think of this rod? Well, since I'm not sponsored by them, I can give you an honest opinion, and my honest opinion is, is that for me personally, I don't have any use for this particular rod, and the reasons are simple. You probably already made an opinion uh, uh, during this video as to whether or not you would use this, but my opinion is, is that I don't see anything it does better than 7018, and because I can run 7018, there's no reason I would ever give up 7018 for this rod for most of what I would do. Now keep in mind, this rod probably does have some useful uh, purposes. To me, the limited penetration uh, would probably be a benefit on thinner material. Now this eighth inch rod, I wouldn't go and try and weld thin sheet metal with it, but if you could get this in 1 16th or 332 rods, I think this would probably run okay on sheet metal due to that limited penetration. As far as it being an 80,000 tensile strength rod, guess what? Most 7018 tests almost that high, so this isn't really stronger, I don't think, than a lot of 7018 and 7014 rods. So what are you really gaining there? Well, hard to say. You know, and that goes back to what I said in the opening of this video, where unclassified rods, you don't really know what you're getting, and I don't like that. Now, could you learn to weld with this? Absolutely. Is that the way I would go to learn to weld? Absolutely not, and the reason is simple. The molten puddle is so difficult to discern. Slag entrapment is very easy with this that if you're welding flat position welds, that's one thing, but trying to do fillet welds and other things, I think you're gonna be a lot more frustrated with this rod than maybe some other ones. Like even 6011, I think the average person with a little bit of practice would probably have better results with that rod than this. So I slowed this down to about 50%, but this is what the weld pool looks like. It's pretty much miserable. I don't know if you can tell, but I sure as hell can't tell where the weld puddle is on this. It just is a mess of bubbling flux. Now, I really like rods like 7024, which are pretty hard to tell where the molten puddle is, but even that rod is way better than this. And as a beginner, you're going to really struggle to understand what's going on, and your welds are probably going to look pretty terrible running this stuff. So my thoughts are, if you can get a bunch of this for free, by all means, burn it all up and then switch to a different rod. I, I really wouldn't recommend to go out and buy a bunch of this unless you can get it a lot cheaper than common rods at your local store. If you can in that case, yeah, it, hey, for practice, it is what it is on that. But honestly, I wouldn't be using this stuff for a general purpose rod. And that's kind of what I expected here. You can feel free to make your own conclusions on that and whether or not this will work for you. And by the way, uh, even though I'm not sponsored by this company, I'm not bashing their products either. I'm just being realistic because, again, you know, it's so hard to navigate stuff like these rods and know what you're getting that you might actually think that you're getting something that's better than what you're normally using and you're kind of just being taken for a ride. Not that their advertising this is better than maybe 7018, but, you know, I don't know. It is what it is, guys, on that. So with that said, if you have any comments, questions, thoughts on this rod, if you use this or have experience with it, feel free to mention it and tell me if you liked it, didn't like it. But for me, uh, it's going to be a pass for me. I wouldn't use this or teach people how to weld with this. It's harder than it should be. With that said, thanks for sticking around. Until next time.